is on self-reliance and defense innovators' perspective, the textbook version of innovation is very different from how it happens in reality. Innovators amongst us are given an opportunity to enlighten us on how they have been able to design and develop cutting edge technologies and also what is holding them back from going to the next level. Dr. Raburi, I hand over the session to you. This will be a 45 to 50 minute session and then we can also take a couple of questions. Thanks. Please remind me if the time is taken. <laughs> I will, I, I will. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Um, uh, I really feel very privileged to be part of this session. Uh, to particularly on Saturdays uh, with uh, you know, people who are really into it for perhaps so many decades of effort, all of you here. I am very delighted to be part of this uh, uh, conference and this particular session. To, uh, to give a slight direction to this uh, session, I would like to throw some few uh, concepts here, uh, which I would like my uh, uh, other distinguished members here to uh, through their, uh, I mean, uh, experience and share their experience and uh, share their ideas how we can uh, handle these things. See, I was told by Ashok uh, that uh, it is about uh, self-reliance through innovation. Uh, all of you, I am sure, you agree that uh, the value creation is mostly from IP. Do you all agree with that, uh, by and large? So the IP is the key for self-reliance here in the. The maximum value comes from that. So how do we create IP and where we should spend our time and effort in creating IP? I will uh, share two concepts here. One is cross-cutting technologies. These technologies are like building blocks which will help you to integrate the existing or capabilities with the emerging technologies. These cross-cutting technologies can be used across the platforms and across various domains, they can be reused. So if we have, if we have the capability to develop those critical technology, technologies, the national capability requirement will be enhanced, uh, I mean, very significantly. So what are those cross-cutting technologies? It could be in the area of sensors, where it is ultra optics or radars, signal processing, data fusion, information security, materials, advanced materials. If these things are developed, I, I, na I named only a few of them, it could be, this could be happen to 40 or 50. So if you look at the technology strategy documents from different advanced countries like US or UK, they have done such a very detailed work about the holistic perspective for their country for the next 20, 30 years. And what are the technologies that we need to focus upon, where the industry, <coughs> academia and the government can collaborate to build that IP so that they are ready, the technology readiness is ensured. So I, I, uh, I uh, request my panel members to focus on some of these critical technologies which will help us to innovate and then achieve the self-reliance. The second concept I want, uh, I thought we should deliberate upon is uh, through life capability management. See, the most of the problems that uh, I, I have seen in my experience in the last 20 years in interaction with Indian Navy and others is the, the, the products that they are imported, the products that they are trying to use, their, uh, their life cycle, even though they say it is 10 to 15 years or 15, 20 years, the real capability is coming down within five years because the through life capability management is not handled properly because the architecture with which the equipment is there or which is imported or shared is not modular, is not flexible and it's not uh, based on open architecture, so it's not open source based. So uh, because of that, if you want to upgrade these equipment for battle readiness or technology readiness and bridge the gaps between our capability and the capability in the environment, then we are uh, we are definitely we are at loss. So this through life capability management and development of these technologies, critical technologies, which are building blocks for us to take us to the next level or the key factors according to me. I want my other panel members to throw light on that. Thank you very much. Mr. Rangarajan, may please, yeah. Um, okay, now I'm going to bit go away from the two areas you talked about. Uh, I think uh, more is when we need IP creation, we all agree that IP has to be created. 
and we'll be building IP. Of course, what IP is depending on what market you, you have knowledge and what market you have accessible to and then you create the IP. Now, here is a question of access to uh, IP creation and access to markets and uh, how, how that is encouraged. This is why the morning discussion, I, I brought up point on IVDN, but we will not take policy like that. But let's look at what has been happening in India. We are saying we don't have a, a very tiered approach in India. Uh, we don't have tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. Uh, HL, BHL, BEL, they manufacture almost everything. Though they have down the line 5,000 vendors, they are all mostly uh, tier 4, tier 5 vendors. Now, this is similar to uh, most of the industry in defense and uh, and that if that has to change, we need to bring more tier 1, tier 2 that IP has to get created. Now, how do we do this? Now, our only method largely till date has been going to DRDO and do product development. And here we have the product also sitting with us. So, maybe this few points which you want to address to him also can come up and can be taken up. And uh, here, when we want IP creation, we do product development. We have one problem in the sense that, yes, all the development we have done for 15, 20 years, we have designed, understood the development process, PDR, CDR, FMECA, all of those processes we have understood, how to make reliable products, the process related to the manufacturing process, all this we have learned. So, we have learned the processes now. Now is the question of bringing domain into picture. IP creates not by just the process, process IP is one, but beyond that, we need to also create domain IP. And when MOD buys, when you to IDDM or whatever, we are talking only a full system is not the initial process. Process gives you manufacturing capability, but we have to get the full, full IP. Here, we start development with DRDO, but we have a problem in the sense that though we learned everything with DRDO, the time has come to DRDO to let go. That is not happening. How? The tender, all tender condition says anything developed in this product, in this tender, belong IP belongs to uh, DRDO. There is no distinction background IP, foreground IP. Now, Vidya, Dr. Vidya sir talked about, you know, you know, building blocks, commercial off the shelf, critical things which can be integrated. Now, building blocks, if we create, still part of the contract, it goes, IP goes to DRDO and we have to get permission to sell it. Now, it has to be more open, IP has to get created, you must allow the organization who are actually developing the product to say, own the IP. It is fundamentally necessary. Then only what happens, whereas DRD will look at a project or a program, here these are building IPs, building block IPs, the IP can be co-created and then generated, it is used across platforms, across programs. IP, you can invest in IP and grow the IP, only the IP belongs to you. Then only putting money inside the IP happens. Now one argument comes to this is that, see we are paying the NRE charges, so IP belongs to us. The actual reality is, in the tender, since it is competitive bid, Nobody actually quotes NRE today. There is so much of competition in the country today. There are so many MSMEs who want an order and they have no orders for years together. They are willing to quote anything. Even less than material cost quotation is done so that future, hopefully, three years from now, some production order will come. So, this is how the reality is. So, keeping in touch with reality, if genuinely you want to create IP, I think you should say this IP belongs to the company who is doing it. You can at least, if that is not possible, it is to give away. For uh, let's say government to do, let's say joint IP can be created. And so that this is not shared. What happens is when technology transfer document goes, all circuit diagram, layout, production documentation, everything. And second, we have another problem here. The certification has to be done as part of development. Aircraft certification, flight worthy, missile quality assurance certification, CQAE certification, whatever process you do, finally the end product is certified. In the process of certification, every design document is also handed over. That is the only IP the whole company has worked on and that is all available in blueprints, soft copies, modified documentation, everything is handed over. This I think a time has come when somebody has really think we are still doing it because we have only one customer is government, you cannot flex muscles there, it is not going to help. So we continue to subjugate ourselves to do this, Every everybody in the industry share my view is what I think, okay, but nobody is, you know, all are frightened to even talk about it openly. Because this is a genuine, a honest God, I tell you, nobody wants to talk about it. I think time has come now, a lot of things are happening now. We should try and change process and allow IP creation. Genuinely, this will create, people will then invest, create IP and come to order. You know, that will all happen, but that the first thing we need to do. Second also, we are not, this, once you create a documentation, it is also written in a dead document that the IP now belongs to DRDO and they are free to give it to any tech DOT to any other company which is typically BEL or HAL or whatever organization. This is again is a very dangerous clause is that we are signing to the clauses hoping it will not happen tomorrow. 
So what is necessary again is if you IP has to be created, if you are not even incentivizing this, at least say okay you have done the development, the order comes to you, follow your production order has to definitely come only to the company you are developing it. There is no guarantee today as part of contract obligation there is not. Now with tender they are also putting a contract now. This contract say I can give it to anybody and we are asked to sign the contract before the order is given to us. So I think something has to get changed, these two points. Third is domain or product when we compete in MOD, how does MSME come and start competing in the MOD business? We let's say put 10 crore, 5 crore, 25 crores, whatever in product development effort, unless the end product is there which is certified, available, MOD I cannot compete in irrespective of which category you talk, unless it's a make category which is a new development takes place. So this is certified. Now when you want to do this, you need to have just not a little bit of COTS or a module because that is not sold uh, it MOD. We are selling end systems. When you want end systems, what really happens is in the interest of uh, DRDO, let us say we'll do, okay, we do one part, you do one part, the domain part I will do, DRDO will do because this will keep it. So to keep the technology opaque to other companies, you split it into 10 different organizations, give each small part one month. This is probably what the private sector would do, but DRDO also does the same thing. So that nobody has a full idea of an end system. The end system integration is given to only DPSU. If by policy you ensure that end system and domain cannot be transferred to industry, this is where we are going to be. It is not, it is not by chance that we don't have an industry. It is by choice and process and it is happening today. We need to have, get ourselves out of this and say if IP has to be done, we have to compete indigenously, allow integration also to be done by private sector. Let the whole system be done. Let the avionics fully be done. Even if let's say knowledge, obviously knowledge will be available only with DRDO. Who can compete with the knowledge with them? They have been doing this so many years. So we can't come over it and say, but then they have to enable industry to happen, make this happen. So the avionics full package, the software, define what you want. Let it get developed by the industry. Let them own the software. Let them maintain it. Let them upgrade it. Our process we talked about 20 years, 40 years, upsell has upgrade. All this happens when the full IP is available to the industry to support the program. Now you have to move part and say this part, is, I, I have no control over the part to see that 40 years support, though I write, write a document saying yes I will support 40 years, but I don't have the full IP there with me. You must allow us to actually build the full system, integrate the full system, buy the product and if the tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 has to happen, it will happen because they will outsource it because cost competitiveness, available competencies will be growing in the country and the ecosystem will, uh, will start. So it is necessary that the full system is integrated, you know, not one PCB you get done and this FBJ I'll get done, this software I'll get done, the mechanical advice and the backplane I'll do, you integrate the system and keep everything with you. This has to stop sir. If this stops, I think that because DRDO now generates IP and uh, product creation in India today in defense and uh, unless they let go, this is not going to happen. Of course it will happen, leak will happen, we will still create products and uh, RFIs have come. We have now, because knowledge you gained with DRDO, we are now saying, okay, I will build the full radar myself. So, radar I will now quote. On the under RFI, we will develop it in two years, we have the RFP, so I will be able to develop it. So, we are taking such risks, but it takes a long time to take a risk until you get all the facets of the product understood, then only you will start taking the risk. This need not be so tough. It has been tough for us, but down the line industry need not have it so tough. They can do it much faster. The process enables such IP creation. Thank you very much, Mr. Andran. See, I, I, actually, I was uh, very idealistic when I started the session with uh, uh, the uh, agenda before us about what we should do. But I think Mr. Rangarajan has been uh, very grounded and straight away very practical and highlighted the actual problem being faced by the industry uh, uh, in actually creation of the IP. Uh, 